The nerve impulse is the sum of mechanical, chemical and electrical disturbances created by a stimulus in a neuron. The conduction of the nerve impulse can be divided into two main phases. Resting membrane potential and action membrane potential. Neurons are excitable cells. They may be stimulated by physical, mechanical, chemical or electrical stimuli. The nerve fiber or axon is covered by a neural, axonal or plasma membrane. The neural membrane has sodium and potassium ion channels called voltage-gated or regulated channels. These channels open or close according to the electric potential across the membrane. The ion channels of the resting membrane are differentially permeable to ions at different rates. It is more permeable to potassium ions, almost impermeable to sodium ions, and totally impermeable to the negatively charged proteins of the axoplasm. Therefore, the axoplasm inside the axon contains a high concentration of potassium ions, negatively charged proteins, and a low concentration of sodium ions. On the contrary, the extracellular fluid outside the axon contains a low concentration of potassium and a high concentration of sodium. This differential permeability is maintained by a sodium-potassium pump present inside the membrane. The sodium-potassium pump transports three sodium ions outside the cell for every two potassium ions that enter the cell. This electrical potential difference across the membrane in an unexcited nerve fiber is called resting potential. And the neuron is called a polarized nerve fiber. When a stimulus is applied to a site, say A, on the polarized membrane, the sodium ion channels open and the membrane at the site becomes freely permeable to sodium ions. This leads to a rapid influx of sodium ions that reverses the polarity of the site. That is, the outer surface of the membrane becomes negatively charged and the inner surface becomes positively charged. This reversal of polarity across the two sides of the membrane is called depolarization. The electrical potential difference across the plasma membrane at site A is called the action potential. This action potential travels as a wave of depolarization along the length of the nerve fiber in a particular direction and is called the nerve impulse. At site B, the axon membrane has a positive charge on the outer surface and a negative charge on the inner surface. As a result, a current flows on the inner surface from site A to site B. On the outer surface, a current flows from site B to site A to complete the circuit of current flow. This reverses the polarity at the site and an action potential is generated at site B. Thus, the impulse generated at site A arrives at site B. The sequence repeats along the length of the axon for the impulse to be conducted. At the peak of action potential, the permeability of the membrane to sodium ions decreases while it becomes more permeable to potassium ions. This is because sodium channels start closing and potassium channels start opening. However, 
This part of the membrane regains its original polarity within milliseconds and this phenomenon is called repolarization. A repolarized nerve fiber undergoes a refractory period of a few milliseconds during which the original ionic distribution is restored by a sodium potassium pump which actively transports sodium ions outward and potassium ions inward. This returns the membrane to its resting potential and the neuron is ready to receive another stimulus. A junction helps transmit the nerve impulse from one neuron to another. These junctions are called synapses. A synapse is formed by the membranes of a presynaptic neuron and a postsynaptic neuron, which may or may not be separated by a gap called the synaptic cleft. There are two types of synapses on the basis of the nature of transfer of information. These are chemical synapses and electrical synapses. Chemical synapses are common in the human system and consist of a presynaptic neuron, synaptic cleft and a postsynaptic neuron. A presynaptic neuron ends with a synaptic knob. A synaptic knob has a large number of mitochondria and many synaptic vesicles. Each synaptic vesicle contains neurotransmitter chemical molecules such as acetylcholine. The synaptic cleft is a fluid filled gap between the axon terminal and the dendron of another neuron. So, there is no protoplasmic continuity between neurons. When an impulse or action potential arrives at the axon terminal, it stimulates the movement of the synaptic vesicles towards the presynaptic membrane. Synaptic vesicles fuse with the plasma membrane and release their neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft. The neurotransmitters thus released bind to their specific chemoreceptors present on the postsynaptic membrane of the dendron. This binding opens sodium ion channels that allow the entry of ions to generate a new potential in the postsynaptic neuron. This may lead to the development of an excitatory new potential or an inhibitory new potential. Electrical synapses are the less common of the two types. They were first found in crayfish, later in silenturates, annelids, mollusks, arthropods and fish. The membranes of pre- and post-synaptic neurons of electrical synapses are in very close proximity. This allows the direct flow of electric current from one neuron to another. Synaptic vesicles are absent and only a few mitochondria are present. Impulse transmission across an electrical synapse is faster than that across a chemical synapse.